In chapter 6, we're going to talk about discrete probability distributions. By the time we finish this chapter, we'll be able to take a look at two very prominent, very common discrete probability distributions. But initially, we're going to first talk about what discrete probability distributions are, and we'll look at a custom example uh, of a custom probability distribution. So let's define first of all the idea of a random variable now we defined variables earlier in chapter one of the course remember the variable is any attribute any characteristics under investigation now the only thing that's different now is the word random so when we talk about random variable now we're talking about a variable whose outcome is simply unknown and is determined by chance phenomena. In our work, there are two types of random variables. We have discrete and continuous, just like we had the case with just variables. Again, remember, the key difference now versus before is the word random. That's the difference. Now, discrete random variable well, this is a random variable whose outcomes are countable or finite. And if you recall, again, the definition mimics what we, we did in Chapter 1, the way we defined simply discrete variables. And typically with discrete variables, both with random and non-random, the values, there are gaps between the values. So there's no continuity, there's there's not an interval where the variable can assume infinite values okay so and what do we use we use the latter part of the alphabet x y z to indicate the name of the random variable it doesn't mean you couldn't use other names for example if the random variable is homicides i may use h for homicides if it's uh, revenues, I may, I may use R for revenues, and so on. So here are some examples of discrete random variables. Let's say the number of bankruptcies uh, in a given month. Let's say in next month, m month of uh, whatever, August, October, February, whatever the month is going to be. We want to know how many bankruptcies there might be. That's what random variable X represents. Or we may think about the number of companies in the S&P 500 that will miss their next quarterly earnings. Another example is the number of loan defaults in a given month. Again, all of these are number of number of, meaning these are counts. So they're, they fit under the countable criterion here. Now, let's talk about discrete probability distributions. So what is a discrete probability distribution? It's very simple. A discrete probability distribution is simply a listing of outcomes of random variable along with the corresponding probabilities. That's what that is. So what do we mean by that? Let's take a look at this example. So in this example I have, we're looking at the number of fatalities on a 4th of July holiday in a selected city in the US so based on historical data let's say I can look at the past uh, 10 years 20 years 50 years 100 years whatever I can afford so this is based on historical data so probability well a number of first of all number of uh, accident fatalities or accident related fatalities zero means no accident fatalities one means just that or two or three okay and the probability of each of those that's probability random variable x assumes a particular valuable value little x and these probabilities are 0 0.55 0 0.25 0 0.15 and 05 okay so this is what we call a probability distribution of a discrete random variable there and it really does that. It tells you how probabilities are distributed across the values. Now, just as with, uh, let's say, other uh, distributions, what is this for, right? What good is this for? Well, we're 
we're going to do a number of things with this. First and foremost, we can define events based on the outcomes that you see, 0, 1, 2, 3. So we can define our own events and then find, be able to find the probability of those events. So that's one thing we could do with this. And then later on, we'll look at like the expected value, the mean of the random variable, the standard deviation. We'll be interested in the histogram of uh, the distribution also. So now before we do any of those, there are a couple of rules for any valid discrete probability distribution. Rule number one. This first part reads, the probability of a particular outcome has to be between 0 and 1 inclusive for all possible outcomes. Now, in this example, I'm, th I'm assuming that uh, i, the subscript i, goes from 1 to n. So here, going off of the subscript i here, so for example, this would be x sub 1, x sub 2, x sub 3, x sub 4. So I have four outcomes here. Now, theoretically, this doesn't have to end with n. We will look at an example, in fact, of a probability distribution where uh, the number of outcomes could go from 0 to infinity. Okay, so... This assumes that there's a finite number of outcomes. So a probability of any one of those outcomes uh, should be between 0 and 1. So that's why I made sure 0 0.55, 25, 15, 05. Those are individually between 0 and 1. And a second rule says that if you sum, remember this sigma means the sum of, if I add up all the probabilities in the case of a finite, finite, in finite number of outcomes, if I add up all these probabilities from 1 to n, the total of all of these should be 1. That means if you add 0 0.55, 0 0.25, 0 0.15, and 0 0.05, these numbers should add up to 1, meaning 100. That's what that is. Okay? Okay, so those are the two rules for any valid probability distributions. Now, let's take a look at an example here of how to find probability of those events that we make up. Remember, that's what primarily these distributions are good for. So up here you see the distribution, down here an example. For the above example, that is this one. We want to find the probability of the following events. Part A. Probability that, let's say we select a particular 4th of July holiday. What is the probability that there are no fatalities? Let's say in this coming 4th of July, next year, the year after, and so on. What is probability of no fatalities? Uh, that would be probability of zero. Part B, probability that there is at least two fatalities between one and three inclusive, between one and three exclusive notice in the case of discrete let me just bold it there you go these are bold faced now it really makes a difference whether you include or you exclude the value of the random variable as you will see and finally probability of fewer than two fatalities now with probabilities semantics are very important so when we say at least two the semantics of that would be two or more. When we say fewer than two, that means not including two, right? Fewer than two in this case is going to be one or zero. Okay, so we're going to get all of these probabilities directly from the table. Probability of no fatality, that would be, uh, actually, I left this out, that would be probability of x equals 0, and that directly from the table, that's 0 0.55 up here. Okay. Probability of at least two fatalities, that means probability of two or more, right? At least two means two, three, four, five, and so on. But our numbers, here you go, are outcomes as high as three. So at least two in this context means two or three. And because these are disjoint events or mutually exclusive events, probability of two or three means probability of two plus probability of three. And we get those directly again from the table. 
see that the probability distribution table 15 and 05 makes 20 okay and that's what that is so that's going to be equal to i didn't just put the number 0.2 okay and uh, um let's see next we're going to take a look at probability between one and three inclusive now one and three inclusive that means one or two or three correct and we can find these probabilities directly from the table that's going to be 0.25 this is 0.15 and this is 0.05 the sum of which ends up being 20 30 45 percent probability between one and three exclusive remember the difference is whether you include or exclude the endpoints that's what that is so uh, that's why i'm highlighting them now exclusive that means you do not include one and you do not include three see the difference between the inequality now versus what is here there is no equal sign so again in the case of a discrete distribution it makes a big difference whether you include or you exclude the endpoints so that's namely probability of two that's 15 percent a notable change in the magnitude of the probability because of the inclusions in part c in part e probability of fewer than two fatalities or well, fewer than two notice i don't have less than or equal to two it's just simply less than two well less than two means one or none right and again these two events themselves are mutually exclusive or disjoint means you cannot have one at the same time you cannot have none they could not occur together so probability of each of those individually are written here so for the total of 80 percent so there you go that's what these probability distributions are good for okay now um we can also draw the histogram okay of these distributions and this is what i have here now so this is the histogram if you will of that probability distribution probability of zero remember that was 0.55 probability of one two or three and notice how the distribution is skewed right skewed to the right so everything that we do with histograms we can do with these notice one notable difference is that at zero one two and three this is a histogram but unlike our histograms earlier for continuous data we do not we do not have bars that connect or touch okay so that's the notable difference in the case of a discrete we have more of spikes single spike uh, that occur at a given uh, value or outcome for the random variable okay so that's what's different and what i mean by that is uh, the following so this is what we do not have okay i don't have a bar that goes like this and this one and then let's say this one would be like that there you go this is what i mean we do not have this right uh, now some textbooks actually do this and they even let's say shade this part they shade this part and shade there you go and for them it's okay it's it's their choice the idea is to give you the idea of continuity which we really don't want to do then you can smooth over and see the shape of the distribution so it looks like the distribution of um, fatality accidents with fatalities on the 4th of july follows a right skew distribution okay but keep in mind uh, this is how the softwares clearly as you can see that's how the softwares do it okay now what else are we interested in here well we are now interested in the mean or expected value of the random variable x okay now notice this is mu right remember the greek letter mu that means the mean of the distribution now the formula says here i have sigma x px okay now this by the way we're going to do this by hand 
okay you can actually do this in Excel and in Minitab even but uh, for that you do need to kind of program these and you actually have to create columns of X column of PX column of XPX in Excel and do it Megastat doesn't do this directly itself okay so just this segment we're going to do it by hand don't worry about software it's really not worth the hassle for the software to do it so we're just going to do this by hand okay now so that's what the mean is right mu is the mean of the distribution and uh, the formula actually tells us how to do it right sigma xpx we're looking at the, uh, the formula that is down here this formula okay now let's do this for the above example remember this one let's do it for this one so we're going to do xpx so remember x is zero px is probability of zero so we're going to multiply these two together next we're going to multiply one the outcome times probability of the outcome outcome times probability of the outcome and then we're going to add them up and that's what sigma means so there you have it i've done that so in this case again this is the outcome that's the probability of outcome oh, and my line moved somehow there you go okay now it's in the appropriate place now doing the formula and so here's xpx down here so that means x1 times probability of x1 x2 probability of x2 x3 probability of x3 and the last one is x sub 4 probability of x sub 4. now x sub 1 here is 0 my first outcome x sub 2 second outcome 1 x sub 3 is 2 and x sub 4 is 3. so we're going to do 0 times probability of 0 1 times probability of 1 and so on probability of 0 is 0.55 so 0 times that and then 1 times that 2 times this probability 3 times this probability so when you do the arithmetic here it's pretty straightforward the first part is 0 this is 0 0.25 that's 0 0.3 that makes 0 0.55 that's 0 0.15 for a total of 0 0.70 so on a given let's say 4th of july holiday we expect 0 0.7 0 0.7 accidents now it's i know it's problematic like how do you interpret 0 0.7 of an accident that's impossible right you either have an accident or you don't so one way to get around this is the following remember this is the number of accidents on a given uh 4th of july on 1 4th of July right so in this one so it's going to be 0.7 accidents per one uh, I'm just going to call it holiday now if I multiply top and the bottom by 10 it's a fraction we can do that right that's going to be 7 out of 10 now isn't it that's what 0.7 is so we expect 7 accidents every 10 holidays in this particular case it was a holiday on 4th of july holiday so every 10 holidays 4th of july holidays you expect seven accidents now if you want to stay with a single for like this coming year this 4th of july then that's just going to be 0.7 almost one accident okay so just want to clarify the notion of decimals and how we can make sense out of it okay now that's one thing we were interested in 0.7 so if i go back to go back to the distribution now 0.7 is actually right about here right there you go this is where mu is the balance point of the distribution right at that point and uh, this thing is not going to tip what the masses that you see and the masses i'm referring to these probabilities as they often do in science as masses engineers call these masses these probabilities and in fact the distribution is called the probability mass function so um, these masses are balanced about this center point the center point is at point seven 
Okay, so that's what that is. Now, let's take a look at the next idea here. What about the variance and, of course, follow through with that, the standard deviation here, right? How do we find these? Well, the variance even is given by this formula, x minus mu squared times probability of x. That's what the formula is for the variance. <coughs> Okay, so this is again the formula for the variance, and the one below it is the formula for standard deviation. All right, so if I want to, let's say we want to do this for this example that we just wrapped up, the one that we just found the mean for, let's find the deviation and the variance for that distribution. So the formula x minus mu squared px, that means you subtract the mean from the outcome, you square it. Then you multiply by the probability of outcome. And then you add them up for all of the outcomes. Okay. Now here I'm using capital N, by the way, in this. Uh, maybe I should use just little n just to be consistent. So let me adjust that. Actually, I'm going to leave that alone. The reason is because, see, so notice I'm using the parameter sigma and I use parameter mu so the assumption is that this is the theoretical distribution so I'm going to stay with capital N assuming this is like the population outcome in the population would look like that okay never mind so let's do this now so I'm going to do x minus mu that would be 0 minus 0 0.7 then you square it 1 minus 0.7 squared 2 minus 0.7 squared 3 minus 0.7 squared then you multiply each of those square deviations times the corresponding probabilities that they come directly from the table. Remember, 0.55 goes with 0, this one with 1, next one with 2, and last one with 3. And that's what the, where these numbers come from. And then 0 minus 0 0.7 is 0 0.7, negative. You square it, becomes positive, times that gives you 26.95. You do the arithmetic for each of these, and this is what you get. That's the variance. That would be like the number of accidents squared, which is, uh, if not impossible, it's very tedious to interpret, not to calculate, but interpretation is meaningless for most parts. That's why we go back to standard deviation by taking the square root of that number. Now, standard deviation is almost one, right? So, that means you expect, uh, on a given 4th of July, you expect about 0.7 accidents, give or take 0.9. And if I project that into, let's say, 10 cities that are comparable, you can also do that. Earlier, I said in 10 4th of July, you expect 7 accidents with fatalities. You can also say, well, in 10 comparable cities on a 4th of July, uh, you expect 7 auto-related fatalities give or take nine and of course the give part would be seven plus nine sixteen they take seven minus nine negative two because we cannot have a negative number of accidents so the lower bound is going to go from zero that interval is from zero to sixteen the most likely outcome is going to be in that interval Okay, so there we go. This is what we want to do. And again, um, no mini tab and no mega stat for this one. We just do it by hand because it's really not worth the hassle. They don't have preset uh, apps or pop-ups that we can just click and, and do this. So we just do it by hand. Now, having gone through that, let's take a look at a binomial probability distribution now for this one we will actually use megastat and also minitab so let's start uh, with the binomial probability distribution one of the most common discrete probability distributions out there now before we actually define the binomial probability distribution we actually look at the formula for it um, we're going to define a binomial experiment a binomial experiment has four characteristics. Okay, so what you're looking at is the signature of a binomial experiment. There should be n trials. These trials are identical and independent. And 
and each trial has two possible outcomes. The trials must be Bernoulli. That means it's only possible outcomes are success or failure. The probability of success is going to be P, and that's going to be fixed, and will remain fixed from trial to trial. Now, let me go back to this idea of independence. How do we ensure independence? Usually, independence is guaranteed or is uh, it's assumed by the way we conduct the experiment. Okay, so in the case of a binomial distribution, we assume that the sampling that we do from the population is done with, with replacement. Okay, so that the probability of success remains fixed. See, that's the last one. If, if sampling is done without replacement, that's not true. So sampling must be done with replacement. So it has to do with the way we conduct the experiment. That, that's what guarantees uh, the independence. Okay, so now in a binomial experiment, once we have a binomial experiment, then we can define the random variable x to be the number of successes in n trials. And the probability distribution is given by this formula. So we can get our probability distribution, like earlier example, the fatalities, either from historical data, or we can actually have a function that generates it. Now, don't worry about the derivation of this formula. We're just going to be users of this formula. Okay. Now, in this formula, probability random variable x becomes or assumes a specific value, little x, is. This front portion is the formula for combinations. Remember when we talked about permutation and combinations in previous chapter, we saw this. And times, that's p to the x times 1 minus p to the n minus x. Okay. Now x here is the number of successes, right? can go from 0 means no success to 1 to 2 all the way up to number of trials. So for example, if I'm taking a multiple choice test, that's going to be a binomial experiment in a multiple choice test with, let's say, 20 problems. Number of trials is going to be 20. Identical independent? Yes, independent because the answers are not related to one another. Let's say these are independent questions. And identical, let's say I'm guessing at every question at random. So that's identical. I'm doing them all the same way by guessing. Each trial, here again the experiment is answering the question on a multiple choice test. Has two possible outcomes. Now either I guess that correctly, that would be success, or incorrectly, that would be a failure. Probability of success is fixed. Well... Let's say my multiple choice test has A, B, C, D. So for any question, I have one in four chance of answering that question correctly, don't I? If the responses can only be A, B, C, or D. So that's how we justify, again, that fixed probability. The last thing I want to say here, by the way, mention is when we talk about success failures with the outcomes, the success and failure may not have their usual connotation. In the case of a multiple choice test, success would be correct guess, wouldn't it? But uh, let's say in another experiment, a success may be the incidence of a prostate cancer. If a person has it, that would be a success. Okay, so it's not necessarily a good thing. All right. Now here, I also want to have your attention to the formula that's in your book. I don't like this formula at all, the way it looks. But that's what your book shows. This is more practical. Oh, and also, right in here, we use software from here on for the next two distributions. We use Megastat and Minitab to do this. So I just want to flash the formula at you so you kind of see, okay, that's what it is. But we're not going to do it by hand. And the book, your authors, again, use CNX. That's the combination notation for this fraction I have up here. And then they use a poor notation pi for population um, percentage. But it should be really little p. 
and this pi is not 3.14 remember uh, pi the ratio of uh, circumference to diameter of a circle that's not what they mean by this one okay just want to clarify that with you so uh, let me actually do this let me make a note of that that pi here does not equal 3.14 okay and it's just uh, at the population percentage is what that is okay and of course that's uh, the probability of success okay in the population now here I this I got this from your book actually so this is a few example of a binomial distribution number of successes X now in this first histogram uh, the probability of success is 0 0.05 number of trials is 10 in fact in every one of these drawings histograms the number of trials is 10 so here probability of success 05 it's a very small isn't it so look at zero has the highest probable outcome 60 percent because probability of success is so poor look at six seven eight nine ten they don't even show on the radar <laughs> probability of three successes you have that single pixel here very low probability these other ones they don't even show up that's how the small they are now as you increase the probability of success and that is what's happening in this diagram see the probabilities are increasing from 0.05 all the way to 0.7 see right that so as you increase probability of success then you go from zero being let's say the most probable outcome to now it's possible to get six seven eight nine successes right the higher the probability of success the more likely we will uh, see a success so the distribution kind of shifts it shifts from a right skewed distribution to nearly symmetrical in fact at 0.5 it's not nearly it's exactly symmetrical to a left skewed distribution so keep in mind when pi is 50 percent the distribution will be symmetric okay and uh, if we smooth over the curve by the way in this case if i smooth over it you kind of see uh, something like this that looks like a well-known distribution itself right the bell-shaped distribution the normal distribution which we'll look at in the next chapter when we talk about continuous probability distributions okay now the formulas for the mean and deviation or variance of binomial distribution you could it still you could still do the formula that we had before in other words um, you could still do sigma x px but we really don't want to do that because that takes longer to do in the case of binomial only you actually have nice close form of the formula it's n times pi or mu equals n times p if you call p probability of success again i don't like the fact that your book uses pi the variance is given by sigma squared is given by n p times one minus p that's what the variance is and what about the standard deviation so sigma is going to be square root of n p one minus p okay remember square root of the variance is a standard deviation so that's what that is right this is the standard deviation and there you have it okay so remember we don't need to do the formula sigma x px and same thing the formula for the variance we need to do that just for binomial okay and here is an example now remember we're going to do this in megastat and then we're going to do it in minitap right so let's see in this example it reads the bank of hawaii reports that seven percent 
of its credit card holders will default at some time in their lifetime. Now, in context of this exercise, right, 7% default. So here is success is if, if a credit card holder will default, okay, uh, on their credit card. And the probability of success here, so I'm going to say P is 0 0.07 right probability of success is that and what is a success this is a success if they default the high low branch just mailed out 12 new cards today n is equal to 12. okay in part a how many of these new card holders would you expect to default okay well we're looking at the expected value right the expected value of the random variable is the same as the mean and that's just NP isn't it that means you do 12 times 0 0.07 okay and when you multiply 12 times 0 0.07 you're gonna get a small number 0.84 almost one between us so 12 milled out 7% of 12 that's what it is, is it? in proportion with the sample size uh, what is the standard deviation sigma is going to be square root of np1 minus p and that's going to be square root of 12 times 0 0.07 well if seven percent default that means 93 percent great majority do not default right under credit card payment so let's do this one now and see what we get so if i multiply the numbers in the radicand i'm going to get 0.7812 and square root of that of course is 0 0.884 884 you know almost the same as the mean right so that's what the standard deviation is so you expect about one of them to default again give or take one so anywhere from zero to two again that would be the most probable outcome <laughs> and we will confirm this we will confirm this uh using megastat and we also use um minitab so that's the answer to part a now uh let's do part b and c in part b uh, i'm gonna write this and then we actually uh, answer this using megastat okay so in part b what is the likelihood that none of the card holders will default okay none of them default so let's write the probability statement for this none means zero so that's probability of x is equal to zero and we'll get that from megastat in part c what is the likelihood or probability of at least one at least one default probability of x now at least one means one or more right that's greater than or equal one so we're going to get both of these numbers again from megastat now okay so let me pause this we're going to go to megastat and bring this up okay so i'm in excel and of course i have my add-ins megastat activated okay so we're going to do the binomial probability so in order to get that distribution the binomial distribution we're going to go to probability and then you go across to discrete probability distributions okay then we're going to click on the discrete distributions and uh, let's click on notice our choices are hypergeometric poisson uh, and binomial okay so here we are in binomial selection and the uh, number of trials for the example we just did n is 12 probability of occurrence that is success for us that's 0 0.07 and that's it you just put those two numbers and hit ok and once you hit ok uh, megastat actually uh, gives you this nice distribution for us so here's a binomial distribution 
uh, n is 12 probability of success is uh, 0.07 and then of course this is the probability distribution you're looking at in particular we're looking at these okay now if you note every one of these probabilities are between 0 and 1 and this one in the bottom is the sum the total of those okay note up here by the way 0 0.9999999 like that so it's rounded to one so uh and again you're in excel so you can play around with this you can uh, do whatever the cumulative probability is just that is probabilities as you go across the values so that's first entry is exactly the same as this one probability of zero cumulative at zero is the same probability of one is 37 percent cumulative probability shows probability of zero or one those two add to this number this next number 0.953 is cumulative from 0 to 2 so if you look at let's say this number 0.99992 that's cumulative of all of everything below it okay so that's what that is since it displays it we are really concerned with this distribution right there okay now notice also megastat gives you the expected value 0.84 the variance 0.781 and the standard deviation 0.884 okay and these are the numbers that we found uh, now we use the binomial uh, formula for that right we used NP but just to show you how else I could have done that I can multiply uh, this right zero times probability of zero right I'm doing xpx and if I do that for all of them this is what I get and of course here if I add those up right so I'm gonna go let me go home here and I'm just gonna add up these numbers there you go I get 0.84 see that number is exactly the same as this number so but we use a formula this was optional xpx we don't need to do that I just did it to show you that it worked okay the other thing that uh, we can see directly below this probability distribution Megaset actually displays the histogram for us also so this is the distribution as you can see the distribution is skewed to the right with these probabilities beyond four that are really negligible for example probability at five look at that there's hardly any any height you can see probability of five is right in here that number is zero 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 eight that's why it's it's barely above the horizontal axis so anyway that's what these are now I'm holding the mouse over it it shows you at zero probability is 4186 probability of one probability of two probability of three four and these don't even show anymore you see that <laughs> okay but anyway this is what the probability distributions histogram looks like so that's what uh, the distribution shows the distribution shows and now from this probability distribution right from this we can actually get those individual probabilities so let's answer those questions now okay so in part b the question asks probability of x zero right probability we have no defaults or well, probability of x equals zero is right in here right that's what this one is and uh, that probability is I'm sorry it's going to be 0 0.4186 0 0.4186 in part C let me write that so I have it 0 0.4186 probability of at least one okay now for at least one remember the semantics at least one means I need to add up 
uh, at least one means one, two, three, four, five, all the way up to 12, right? So I need to add up all of these probabilities, which we could. That's one way to do it. Sum those up. Or, or to add these is to subtract 0.4186 from one, isn't it? You subtract one, or, or again, 0.4186 from one, you get what's left over the rest of them. So I'm going to actually do that. I'm going to go uh, 1 minus this number, using it as a calculator. There you go. That's the answer to that exercise, to that part C of the example, 0.5814. And we will confirm these in Minitab in just a moment. Okay, so there we have it. Now let me actually bring up Minitab and we do this in Minitab. So we are now in Minitab. So let's take a look at this Minitab. I'm going to go to, let's see, Calc, Probability Distributions. Now look at this one. Minitab by far has a whole heck of a lot more of these well-known distributions. So the one we're looking at is binomial. Okay. So, do we want cumulative? We just want probability. Number of trials. Number of trials was, what, uh, 12. And event probability, that's probability of success, 0.07. And I don't have an input column, and that's it. Let's just hit OK. Oops, input is invalid. Input column. OK, let's see. I'm just going to put the uh, optional, all the input column here. Let's, let me see this one. Okay, so what I had to do, I had to actually create a column here. I called it variable X. And you, this is called the input column in Minitab. So notice I just typed in number 0, 1 through 12. Okay. So there is, this is what the reference to input column is. Now, I'm going to go to Calc and Probability Distribution, Binomial, uh, Probability, Number of Trials is 12, Event Probability 07, and let me show you that, there you go. The input column now appears once you go in this cell. Just select this one, select and hit OK. And once we do, we'll see the output here. And there you go. And this is the probability distribution in Minitab. Mm -hmm. Notice these entries are exactly the same as before. Now I can just double click on these. And of course, uh, nothing happens on that. But anyway, these are the distributions. The probability dis distribution that is exactly the same as in a mega stat. Now, what if I want to get a histogram of the distribution? I'm going to just go to graph, probability distribution plot, view single, OK. And uh, here you have the choice. Uh, I selected binomial. Number of trials is 12, probability 0.07. And hit OK. <coughs> and if I double click on the histogram you kind of see the histogram that we saw earlier notice in minitab they actually use closed bars you see that personally i'd rather the spikes the masses at a given point but the reason they do this just so you see the continuity and it aids to decipher what the shape of the distribution is so there you have it this is how you do this in minitab Okay, and again, to answer the probability questions, you answer them exactly as before. Probability of 0 is 4185. Probability of at least 1 would be 1 minus that, or you can add up all these probabilities. Probability of 1, 2, 3, and so on. Okay, so let me go back now to my notebook, and I'm going to put these answers in. Okay, so probability of x equal 
zero, we found that to be 4186, 0.4186, and probability of at least one turned out to be 0.5814. And with that, we are done with the binomial distribution. Now let's take a look at our second and uh, last distribution in this chapter and name the uh, Poisson probability distribution. So here's all you needed to know about the Poisson distribution. <clears throat> the distribution is named after uh, Simeon Poisson, the French mathematician of the 19th century, late 18th, early 19th century. And actually Poisson discovered this distribution as he was working on distribution of criminal cases, the time to disposition of criminal cases. <clears throat> and uh, of course he instead of he dies maybe I should say <clears throat> he died right so let me fix that while I'm here there you go he died in 1840 <clears throat> after he actually discovered the distribution now uh, the Poisson distribution is kind of a very interesting distribution this distribution is used for uh, random variables whose outcomes are very unlikely to occur, okay? And in fact, this distribution, as I have it here, is known as the law of improbable events. So for very unlikely events, like for example, the probability that an asteroid will hit the Earth in the next 50 years, these probability models are, are done using Poisson distribution. What is probability of World War III? Something like that. So, uh, one thing to note here, by the way. So, let me actually read over this, okay? So, this models the frequency number of times with which event occurs during a particular period of time. So, this particular period of time, we have what they call an area of opportunity, or you have an interval of time or a continuum in which events could occur in. The longer the continuum, the interval, the more probable the event is. Okay, so that's what this is. The longer the time interval, the larger probability of occurrence. Now, one thing, unlike the binomial distribution, which distinguishes the two, is that there are no trials in a binomial distribution. Okay. So, if we have rare events, they're usually modeled using Poisson. And with Poisson distribution, we usually have a rate, a rate of occurrence. Like, for example, let's say the number of customers arriving at the bank and getting in the queue in order to see a teller. Let's say the customers arrive at the bank at a rate of 5 every 10 minutes depending on the day and the uh, and the time of the day <laughs> okay or it could be the number of cars that are lined up in the drive through at the Starbucks at McDonald's and so forth so there is the rate that I'm talking about so now we assume that the probability is proportional to the length of interval and the intervals are assumed to be independent and uh, mutually exclusive okay <clears throat> so and the reason is that uh, in these in, in this interval by the way that we not the reason but the, the assumption is that these intervals are small enough to where the event can either occur or not occur in that interval of time okay so if we let now the random variable x be the number of occurrences of that event in the time interval of length t and lambda here is the rate your book uses mu again i don't like the use of mu because we use mu for population mean something different so i'm using lambda uh, so this lambda here is a rate per unit of time okay or they, they also call it an area of opportunity, whatever that means, uh, instead of rate per unit of time, because not always we have a time here, okay? But anyhow, 
this is the probability distribution and again we use software so don't worry about the doing this by hand but that's what this is okay now here in your book they show three different Poisson distributions uh, for the for an example that's in your book but I just want to show you the histogram this is a histogram of a Poisson distribution where mean mu is 0.7 it looks like this again zero is the most probable outcome okay 50 percent almost probability of that as mu increases look at the shape of the distribution it becomes more symmetric at around six when mu is two look at the most probable outcome is two right one and two when mu is six the most probable outcome is six in fact the mean the mean or expected value of a Poisson distribution is its parameter lambda so and remember I'm using lambda your book uses mu so right in here that's these are all lambdas I don't like the use of mu because we use mu in a different context but then I can kind of see where they may want to do that because the mean of a Poisson distribution is also its rate that's why they called it the mu for the mean but anyhow just the shape of the distribution is what we are interested in here okay for small values of lambda it's highly skewed to the right and as lambda grows the distribution becomes more symmetric okay now here I have made up a couple of examples now I've calculated these by hand but we will confirm uh, this is a calculator but we will confirm these actually in Megastat and we will confirm it in Minitab just so you see how it's done in both of those so for uh, the first example here let's say an accident occurs at the rate of one every two months in a rural area notice how rare that event is one every two months we want to know what's the probability of no accidents in a given month now here you got to be careful because our time period this is one for two months right we are actually asking what's the probability of no accidents in a single month so we need to adjust our lambda here right one every two months means half of one every month so there you go that's going to be Poisson and uh, lambda again is one half the rate is one half probability of no accident that means probability of x zero okay and I calculated it using a calculator this formula that don't worry about doing the formula but if you want that's what that is I did 0 0.5 to 0 e to negative 0 0.5 divided by 0 factorial which is 1 and this is what I got this is 0.5 to 0 is 1 also so the answer is going to be this okay so we need to verify this that's our first example in the second example this one bank customers arrive at a rate of 3.2 every four minutes on a weekday afternoon okay and we want to know these two probabilities first probability that x is 5 remember x is the number of customers what's the probability that five customers will arrive in a four minute interval okay so for this example again we have a poisson with a rate of 3.2 probability of x is 5 again i tried it in my calculator okay calculator I tried it in the calculator and I got this number I got 0.1141 we'll confirm these in a minute in part B what is probability of more than seven more than seven customers in a four minute time <clears throat> well more than seven means eight nine or uh, theoretically I could have infinitely many right that's why I have this dot 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 here and nine and so on 
and that probability is going to be 1 minus probability of x less than or equal 7. All right, greater than or equal 8. Using the law of complements, that would be 1 minus probability of less than or equal 7. And for this one, probability of x greater than 7, uh, that turns out to be 0 0.0169. Okay. So let's actually take a look at these now in both Megastat and Minitab. Okay, so I'm in Minitab now. I'm sorry, I'm in Excel now actually. I'm going to go to Add-ins. And here's Megastat. We're going to go to Probability Discrete Distributions. And activate Poisson. Notice it says mu also, mu, mean rate of occurrence. For our first example, uh, the mean rate of occurrence was 0.5. Okay, so I'm just going to type in 0.5 here. Make sure again, Poisson is highlighted. Yeah, 0.5. It was one accident every two months, which means half an accident per month. Maximum value. This is like if you don't want it to go to infinity, let's, I'm just going to leave that alone and hit OK. Notice there is no number of trials here, right? Like it was a binomial. And by the way, there is a way to approximate binomial probabilities using Poisson distribution, but I'm going to skip over that part. Okay, so there you go. Here's Poisson distribution. Uh, the megastat itself stopped at 8. Notice because probability is almost nothing there left so it wouldn't make sense for it to go to infinity it terminated it at some point and this is the probability distribution what you're looking at now okay so there you go and that's our probability distribution <clears throat> to answer part uh, example one probability of x equals zero there it is that's 0 0.60653. We got it to be 0 0.6065 using my calculator. And for the second part, let's run this again. Add-ins, make a stat. For the second part, discrete, uh, mu was 3.2. That's for the number of customers arriving at the bank. Mean was 3.2. And again, hit OK. Oh, let me go back up. Sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, this was binomial. We went over that one. Okay, this is Poisson. I was going to show you down here. For the Poisson distribution, the mean or expected value is the same as the mean rate of occurrence. See up here and down here. Those are the same. And the variance is the same. Isn't that nice? So the rate of occurrence is the same as the expected value and the same as the variance. The standard deviation would be square root of uh, the variance, square root of 0.5 in this case. Okay. And now let me go down. And this we went over this one. So let's now take a look at the customer arrivals. This is the probability distribution. Again, mean rate of occurrence is 3.2 every four minutes. So expected value, you expect 3.2 in the next time interval. That means the next four minutes with a variance, which is equal to lambda. Standard deviation will be square root of that. And this is what the distribution now looks like. Notice we've got this nice uh, right skewed distribution. Okay, so that's what these are. And that's all this one shows. Okay, so if I want to do again probability of five customers in the next time interval means in four minutes, that's going to be the answer right in here. Right? 1139. Now I calculated that to be 1141 because I rounded stuff. Megastat carries more decimals. If you look up here, look at all the digits here. See that? 
that's how many it should be 16 of those so it carries double precision and it displays it with that but you can actually change that it's, oh, I thought you could uh, never mind let me see if that's gonna work with uh, no at this point these are they're not non changeable okay now to do probability of more than seven remember that's probability of uh, eight or more so I can do one of two things eight or more I can add th these probabilities right here we can add those in fact let me do that so that's going to be the sum of eight or more of these the answer is 0 0.01683 or the way I did it in my note, I did one minus less than or equal seven. There you go, those, one minus those. Again, the whole thing is one, right? Right down here, you see that? This column, all the entries add up to one. So if I wanna know what's probability of eight or more, means that highlighted region, I can just add them like I did here, that's the answer. Or instead of adding them, I can do one minus the rest of them and that's what I did in my note the reason is because in Minitab that's how I should do it I have to go less than or equal Minitab doesn't give greater than or equal okay so if I go now I'm gonna go 1 minus the sum of 0 through 7 and there you go see these two numbers are the same right both of them so you can do it that way okay now let me do this in mini tab okay I'm now in mini tab remember my previous run was a binomial distribution now I'm gonna do a Poisson so we're gonna go here you can go calc probability distributions and there's Poisson we want probabilities oh and okay this one requires input column again so let me actually put my input columns here actually I'm gonna use the same input columns as the binomial that was good enough right that one started with 0 1 2 3 and went all the way to 12 remember make stat went all the way to what it went only t as high as 8 we're gonna go actually let me go to 10 so I'm gonna delete those okay and let me delete my other runs okay so there you have it this is my input column now so I'm gonna go calc probability distribution Poisson probability the mean in my first example again was 0.5 this was the number of accidents in that in two months right one in two months means half in every month my input column is X again and hit OK and there you go and this is the probability distribution looks exactly just like uh, the other one did right in megastat so probability of no accidents that means when x is zero right so that's going to be 60 percent 60 65 okay and then uh, if you want a histogram again i can go to graph probability distribution single okay and this time i'm going to go to alphabetical list look at all the distributions that you can do in mini tab that's poisson the mean is a half 0.5 hit OK and this shows the distribution uh, of those outcomes again Poisson distribution skewed to the right for mean 0.5 and now let me rerun the other one the other one was for number of uh, customers arriving at the bank so I'm gonna go calc probability distribution Poisson 
This time the mean is 3.2 customers every four minutes. Input column X is good. And this is now the distribution. Remember, um, I guess, uh, what was it? Uh, oh, I didn't do this one uh, in for Excel. Let me actually go to Excel and check it out. This this was mean 3.2 huh, we did so in megastat megastat went all the way to 17 but look there's not much probabilities here below 15. so anyway uh, i'm using minitab there very comparable so probability of five customers arriving in the next time interval 14 minutes five we got it to I got it to be 1141 on my calculator and that probability is 114 again pretty close probability of um, more than seven again you can go one minus probability of less than or equal seven do one minus all of these and we get the same results okay and that's that's what that is okay so um let me go back to my note and we'll uh write this information about the mean of the poisson distribution is the same as its the mean of occurrence and its variance is the same okay so i'm back in my note now so let me actually write down what i just said um for a poisson distribution see the mean mu here is going to be lambda means its rate of occurrence and its variance is also lambda that means its standard deviation is the square root of lambda so uh, we noted that from the output also okay now i have one more i believe example here so let me go down so we verify these numbers uh, this is one that's actually in your textbook so we're going to do this one and well, let's run this in megastat okay because you also know how to do it in minitab but this is an example of a poisson distribution the question reads recent difficult economic times have caused an increase in the foreclosure rate of home mortgages okay notice again the keyword here we have a rate you see that a rate of occurrence now statistics from the pen bank and trust company show their monthly foreclosure rate is now one loan out of one out of 136 loans okay so that's like a probability number right one out of 136 last month bank approved 300 loans right so that's the number of loans okay in part a how many foreclosures would you expect the bank to have last month okay how many would you expect so that means they want the expected value so first of all we need to come up with lambda so for this exercise lambda turns out to be 2.2 foreclosures this is per month right so we multiply it again one out of 136 times 300 and that gives us our rate 2.2 foreclosures okay and so this is the answer to part a in part b what is the probability of exactly two foreclosures as probability of x equals two which we go to megastat in a moment and get it that's exactly two equals two and in part C, what is the probability of at least one? Well, again, at least one means x greater than or equal one. Or you can do by law of complements, that would be one minus probability of less than one, right? At least one, less than one. And in the case of discrete, less than one means zero. We cannot have negative outcomes, so that's what that is okay so i just need to get those two numbers right so our lambda again is 2.2 and we want probability of two and 
probability of zero and I come back to my note. So let me go back to Megastat now. Okay, so I am in Megastat and uh, this is like new worksheet. So I'm going to go add in Megastat probability discrete Poisson and I'm going to change the rate, right? The rate um, that we just figured out was, uh, I believe it was 2.2, .2, correct? So there you go, 2.2. And maximum, that's okay. I'll let the default to handle that. And hit OK. And in my output, there you go. Poisson mean rate of occurrence 2.2. This is actually the probability distribution right there. Expected value variance are the same. Deviation is the square root of the variance. And this is the probability distribution. Notice it's again skewed to the right. Most of the Poisson distributions are right skewed. Okay. Theoretically, these outcomes go to infinity, but then things kind of uh, converge to zero almost very rapidly. Okay. So I want to find probability of two. That's right in here. So there you go. I just double clicked on it. Look at how many digits. Let me do that again click once nothing happens double click there you go because when you double click excel things you want to edit the cell that's why it displays everything but just single click and you can look up here to see more digits okay so the answer to the first part is 26.2681 right 20 almost 27 percent chance and probability of zero that one is 0 0.1108 1108 now i can go back yeah now i can go back and actually input these into my note okay i'm now in my note so let me just uh, type those numbers in now <clears throat> first probability of two probability of two we found that to be 0.2681 two six eight one so that means about almost 27 percent right two six eight one and uh, the other probability is going to be one minus probability of zero that was point one one oh eight and that probability is going to be what uh point eight eight one two this is roughly 88 percent the other event is about 27% probability or likelihood. And there you have it. Example of finding Poisson probabilities. So with that, with that, we are done with this chapter. So we talked in this chapter about discrete probability distributions. We looked at two very specific one, the Poisson and up here the binomial distribution and of course we started it with our own custom probability distribution okay so hopefully you enjoyed this and you learned a lot we're done with chapter six